<clears throat> hey everybody, this is going to be the tutorial video for section 10.2, day 2 on simplifying radicals. We're going to continue our rad journey. I know it is a cool journey. All right, so I'm going to present my screen. You should see my 10.2, day 2 handout, which you have in front of you. TI up just so we have that going. All right. Okay, so today's goal, we're gonna continue simplifying radical expressions. Um, by the end of today, the goal is gonna be that you're able to find the product of radicals with variables, numbers, and other radicals. So the other day, we really just focused on one radical expression at a time. Today, we're gonna throw in more than one and multiply them together. Key ideas that we wanna look at for today would be the idea that if you just take a regular number and multiply it by a regular number, you're still just going to get a regular number. And by that, what I'm saying is like numbers out front of the radical that are not underneath. Same would work for division. If you divide two regular numbers, you still get a regular number. And then anything under the radical symbol can also follow the exact same rule. If you have one number under a radical and another number under a radical, if you multiply those two radicals together, you can just multiply the numbers under the rats. Okay. So by that, what I mean is something like, you know, square root of two times square root of three. Well, that's just the square root of six. Okay. And the same would work for division. We're not gonna do a lot with division today, um, but that is coming soon. So radical divided by a radical, you can just divide the numbers under the radical. Don't try to mix and match these rules um, until the very, very end of the problem. Your final answer for these is always gonna involve some type of regular expression not under a radical, multiplied by some radical expression. When you're multiplying two radical expressions, you can go about it in a couple different ways. Um, the first thing I always try is I try to multiply the numbers that are under the radical together to see if they give me a perfect square. Because if they give me a perfect square, the radical is going to go away once I take the square root. And if I don't get a perfect square, you know, it kind of depends on how big the number is. If the number is small, we could just break down the number as is. Otherwise, I always find it better to break each part into factors and look for pairs and perfect squares. We talked about the idea the other day. I gave you the analogy of, you know, two numbers going out on a first date, like rad 41 times rad 41. Hey, this 41 is getting ready inside their house, and this 41 is getting ready inside their house. But when they go out on that first date, they're going to come out as one couple. So they come out of the house, and now they're on their date, and you just see 141. So we're going to use that idea today. So let's start with rad 3 times rad 12. According to what my strategy was from above, the first thing I'm just going to try is multiplying those two numbers together to see if I get a perfect square. They're both under a radical, so I can multiply them together. 3 times 12 is 36. So I get rad 36. And I know the square root of 36 is a perfect square. This comes out to 6. So that strategy works pretty nice for the first one. You try it on number 2. I'm going to show you two ways to do this one, and you can take your pick for which one you like better. First thing I notice is rad 32 times rad 5. I'm going to try the same thing I did in the first one and see if they give me a perfect square. So I'm going to call this route number 1. 32 times 5 is 160. So this would be the square root of 160. If you type that into your calculator, though, the square root of 160, oops, not what I wanted. Square root of 160 is not a perfect, 160 is not a perfect square because that comes out to a decimal. Okay, 12.6491064, clearly not a whole number. So I could keep it going. 160 is not terribly large. And I can think of a nice perfect square that fits into 160, 16. So I could do rad 16 times rad 10. So this would be 4 for rad 16. And rad 10, 
we saw this one in the day one notes. This is rad two times rad five, but that doesn't help me because square root of two doesn't break down anymore and square root of five does not break down anymore into perfect squares. So I just scratch that and I just leave it as four rad 10. Okay, so you might like that route. Some other people like the route of just pairing up the factors. So for example, square root of 32, I can break down individually. This is rad 16 times rad two. Reason I'm using those numbers is 16 is a perfect square. And then this rad five can just come down. Well, square root of 16, I know is a perfect square. That's four, comes out of the house. By house, I mean, anytime I say house, I'm talking about the radical symbol. And then rad two does not break down anymore. Rad five does not break down anymore. So I'm just gonna push these two together, two times five, and put them under one radical symbol. Two times five is 10. So I still get four rad 10. It's a match. Okay. Number three, there's a lot of different rads going on. You could try to multiply them all together, but if you notice in this one, I can automatically pair up a couple of these. Rad two and rad two, two copies of the same rad. That's just gonna make one two. Rad three times rad three, well, think about it. Three times three is nine. The square root of nine is still three. So this is just using the rule that if you have two copies of the same rad, it comes out of the house just with the number you see underneath. And then the square root of 16 I know is four. So I'm just multiplying in this one, two times three times four, which is six times four, which is 24. Number four, same type of question, but things are kind of out of order. One thing I know I can do with multiplication is I can rearrange the order of the numbers I'm multiplying. So I see, first thing I see is a rad 10. So I'm gonna look at my list here and I spy another rad 10. So I know I can put those two together. Let me do that in red, switch color. I see a rad five, that's not a switch of color. Rad five, I see another rad five over here, so I'm gonna put those together, rad five times rad five. And then I see a lonely rad seven, and there's no one to pair up with the rad seven. Okay, so using my rules, rad 10 times rad 10, this is gonna come out as just 10. Rad five times rad five is gonna come out as just one five. And there are not two copies of the rad seven, there's just one, so that's gonna to have to stay rad seven. And this goes back up to my rule that I mentioned at the beginning. A regular number times a regular number is just a regular number. Both the 10 and the five are on the outside of the rad. So those are just regular numbers I can multiply together. 10 times five is 50. And then I have to tag on the rad seven. This would be 50 rad seven. Okay. Number five. Get rad 32 times rad 12. First thing I'll try is to multiply 32 times 12 together, see if I get a perfect square. 32 times 12. So 384, entering big number territory. Maybe we're not sure. You do have that list I gave you the other day. So if you're looking at that list right now, you'll notice 384 is not on that list. And this confirms it. This number is not a nice whole number. So you have your options. You can try to break down rad 384 if you'd like, okay? trying to find the biggest perfect square. That was the strategy we did the other day. So I'll show you that route. You know, maybe we'll try, what's the next lowest perfect square below 384? I think 18 times 18 is 324, right? 324, but 324 is not gonna go into 384. We're probably going to be in the hundreds. Let's see. So let's try 196. So just 384 divided by 196. Nope. So let's try 169. That's another perfect square. Nope. So I'll try 144. Nope. Try 121. So again, you got to be patient with yourself. If you're going to go with this route, 
you might not find it right away. Definitely not going to try 100 because 100 is only going to go into 300. Uh, let's try 81. Nope. 64. Cross your fingers. Here we go. Will it work? Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. 64 times 6. So this would be rad 64 times rad 6. And rad 64 is 8. And 6 would break down into 2 and 3, but that doesn't help me because 2 and 3 don't break down anymore. So I'm going to leave it as rad 6. So that's one way of doing it. You also could do the strategy I showed you where you break down each number individually. This deals with smaller numbers. You might like this better. I know 32 is rad 16 times rad 2. And 12, well, you could break 12 down into, if you want, you could do 4 and 3. You could do 2 and 6. I'm going to do 4 and 3 just because 4 is a perfect square. So then the 16 will come out of the radical as a 4. Rad 2 doesn't change. This rad 4 will come out as a 2. And this rad 3, I'm not changing. And then I'm going to pair things up. I notice this is on the outside, this is on the outside, so I can multiply those together. That's 8. And then I check the radicals to see if they break down anymore. 2 won't break down to any more perfect squares. 3 will also not break down to any more perfect squares. So that means I can push these two together. 2 times 3 is 6. So I still get 8 red 6. So take your pick, whichever way you like. In the past, I've seen most people prefer this route when you have more than one red. Um, by this route, I'm talking about this one. Uh, number six, I see some numbers out front. So first thing I'm going to do is multiply those together. Two times four is eight. And then notice I've got a rad three times another rad three. When I have two copies of the same rad, that just comes out as one copy of three. And then I bring the eight down. 8 times 3 is 24. Number 7. You don't see a number out here. It's just a 1. I'm going to pair those up first. Negative 3 and 1 are both on the outside, so I can multiply those regular numbers together. Get negative 3. And then I have times the square root of 48 times the square root of 6. I'm going to check 48 times 6, see if it's a perfect square. 288, if you look at your list, 289 is a perfect square. 288 is not. Okay, so I'm going to not go the route of trying to break down 288. Okay. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to break down 48 and 6. And I'm going to do this in a way so that I end up getting another copy of rad 6. Doesn't 6 go into 48? Yeah, it goes in. 8 times 8, rad 8 times rad 6. And the reason I'm doing that is because then I can pair up the rad 6 with another rad 6. And these two rad 6s just turn into a normal 6. And then I bring down the rest. Negative 3 times, there's my rad 8, times my 6. Now I'm not done yet. Uh-oh. Oh no, I lost the TI. One second, I'm going to get my TI back. Sorry, technical difficulties. One sec. TI. There we go. Okay, so back to that one. I've got negative 3 times 6 are both on the outside, so I can make that negative 18. And then I have the rad 8 I'm going to bring down. But I'm not done yet. Because rad 8 can actually break down to another perfect square. 4 times 2 is 8. So I can break this down into rad 4 times rad 2. Negative 18 comes down in front. And rad 4 is 2. 
comes out of the house. So you get negative 18 times 2, and that rad 2 has nobody to pair up with, so I leave that one alone. Regular number times regular number is regular number, negative 36. And then I bring down the rad 2. Uh-oh, I wanted to highlight. Highlight, there we go. Okay, that'll do it for the first page. Got two more that I want to do with you. Look at number eight. In number eight, I see negative two rad three times 10 rad 60. First thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to take care of those numbers on the outside. This is a regular number times a regular number. Negative two times 10 is just negative 20. And then I'm going to check to see if 3 times 60 is a nice, clean, perfect square. That would be rad 180. But 180 is not on my list, and you can even try it on the calculator. This is not going to be a perfect square. So instead, I'm just going to leave it as rad 3 times rad 60. And I'm going to break down the rad 60. You could go with the route of finding the biggest perfect square. What I'm going to do is see if I can find a 3 that would go into 60, because then I can have two rad 3s that pair up together. So if you try it, 60 divided by 3, it works. 20 times 3 is 60. So what I'm going to do is write this as rad 3 times rad 20, because now these two 3s are going out on a date. Once they come out of the house, they come out as one couple. So this just turns into a 3, and this is rad 20. Regular number times regular number, regular number. So I get negative 60, rad 20. Then take a pause and ask yourself, can I break down the square root of 20 anymore? Are there any more perfect squares that go into 20? Well, look at your list. List out all the numbers up to 20 that are perfect squares. 1, 4, 9, 16. And I spy that 4 can still go into 20. So I'm going to break this down to rad 4 times rad 5. There's my negative 60. Don't forget to bring that one down. And the square root of 4 is 2. So I get negative 60 times 2 times the square root of 5. Common theme we've seen today, a regular number times a regular number is just a regular number. Negative 120. And then I've got one copy of rad 5, so it has to stay under the radical symbol. It can't come out. That's it. Okay. All right, last one for new material. And I have a couple throwback questions for you to try. Number 9, we've got some variable expressions involved. So negative 2 times the square root of 24a times 3a times the square root of 4a to the ninth. First thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to take care of the stuff on the outside like I've been doing today. So I'm just going to write that as negative 2 times 3a. I know that's going to automatically be negative 6a because that's not under the radical symbol. Now, I am going to try 24 times 4 to see if that's a perfect square because then I can just push it under one rad. 24 times 4 is 96, not on my list. So that means I'm just going to leave them separated. So that's just going to be times rad 24 from this rad. And then I'm going to do times rad 4 from this rad. And now I got the A's as well. I've got rad A. So I'm, going to br I'm just breaking it apart. It's all multiplication. Rad A, and over here I've got rad A to the 9th. So now let's see if we can simplify. Let me take it step by step. Square root of 24, well, one thing I notice here, square root of 4 is just 2. So that one's going to come down as a 2. Comes out of the house. And rad 24, I can break down into the biggest perfect square that would go into 24 is 4. So times rad 4 times rad 6. And then I'm going to try to push these two together and see if it, if it helps me out. This is like a to the first. a to the first times a to the ninth. Well, that would be rad a to the tenth. So I'm going to do a little scratch work on the side. 
from yesterday, remember your index here is two. Whenever you're gonna take square roots involving variable expressions, you wanna make sure that this number divides by this number to give you a whole number, which in this case it does. 10 divided by two would give me a to the fifth once it comes out of the house. So this is just rad a to the 10th, if we keep simplifying. Negative 6a times 2 is negative 12a. Rad 4 is just 2. Rad 6, I'm not going to break down because it would just be rad 2 times rad 3. And that doesn't help me because there's no more perfect squares that go into either of those. I'm going to leave that as rad 6. And then rad a to the 10th, 10 divides by 2 very nicely to give me a to the 5th. sec. Get rid of some of these dots. Here we go. Okay. So now I look and I've got three things on the outside. I've got a negative 12a, a 2, and an a to the fifth. I'm just going to push those all together on the outside. Negative 12a times 2 times a to the fifth and then times rad 6. These can all get multiplied together. I'm going to make this a to the first. I'm going to collect my coefficients in front. Negative 12 times 2. I'm going to put the a's together. I'm just rearranging the order since it's all being multiplied. Negative 12 times 2 would be negative 24. And remember your exponent rules. Both of these have a base of a. When I multiply exponential expressions that have the same base, I need to add these exponents together. So I'm going to get a to the sixth. And then that lonely rad six has no one to pair up with. So it just stays rad six. You got to make sure you're staying organized with these. Don't do these in your head. Oh, I did the same thing as last time. Make sure you're writing out your steps. And there's obviously more than one way to do these. You're going to have to try these out little bit for yourself and see which method you like. I've shown you a couple different methods to do these at this point. All right, so at this point, what I'm going to do, I will put answers on the screen to the throwback questions in a minute. You can pause my video and try these out. Okay, number one, number two, and number three. Okay. And then after that, I'm going to stop the video. And the rest of your assignment is going to be to do the second two pages, the extra practice, and you're going to check your answer with the key that I posted on the Google Doc. Hey, I have detailed answers worked out to those 12 questions, I believe it is. Yep, there's 12 of them. Okay, so those I'm not going to keep the video recording on for. You're going to do those after you try out the throwback questions. Okay, so you can pause the video. I'll put answers up to the throwback questions on the screen. If you want to see detailed answers worked out to those, you can check the answer key that I posted. Okay. Happy mathing. So here's your answer to number one. It should be 3n cubed times rad 6n. For number two, you should have gotten 3 plus or minus rad 5 over 5. And for number 3, if you solve that with quadratic formula, you should have gotten x equals 2 plus or minus rad 22 over 3. If you want to see worked out solutions to those, take a look at my key. I have the answers written up step by step. Um, any questions on those, we can walk through those together uh, during the office hour on Thursday. Have a good rest of the day.